Hey guys, Wayback Rewind here. Today I'm going to do part six of my analog to digital video conversion series. Number one question I get asked here at Wayback Rewind is how do I get the video out of the camera and into my laptop? Today I'm going to show you probably the oldest method and the most foolproof method that works every single time. I'm going to record directly off the TV screen and you can use any camera to do this, but I'm going to use the most ubiquitous camera today and that's an iPhone. I have an iPhone 14 here and I'm going to point it directly at the screen and show you how you can convert your analog video into digital. Coming up next here on Wayback Rewind. Hey guys, welcome back. I get asked this question all the time. How do I get the video out of the camera onto my laptop? And the answer is there's a lot of different ways. I've got a six part series here so far. I'm going to show you today the most foolproof method and that is recording directly off the screen. This is the oldest, most bootleg way of doing it, but it's foolproof. It will work every single time. It's sometimes called the analog loophole because if I can see it with my eyes, I can record it with a camera and therefore I can capture it. And if I use a digital camera, then my signal is already digital and all I have to do is copy it to my laptop. So I'm gonna use an iPhone. I'm not really an iPhone guy. This is my work phone to be honest with you, but I'm gonna show you this phone because this is the phone most people are familiar with and is very simple to use. The built-in camera app is not that great. I've downloaded a camera app here called Pro Video. Pro Video is very, very functional. I will tell you that I paid $3 for a lifetime license, maybe it was $3.99, but it's worth it. And I'll show you why in a minute. The number one thing you have to do when you're recording directly off the screen is you have to match your shutter speed to the appropriate level for video. And for video, that's gonna be either 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. So the one advantage of this is I can have a lot of different control over how this is recorded. Compared to the built-in camera app, I can set my, my quality all the way to max. You know here, way back rewind, I tell you always record at the highest quality possible. I'm gonna do 4K 30. It's because TV is 30 frames per second or 60 fields. Either way, 30 or 60 is gonna work out great. So with this, I can come in and set my shutter speed at 60. I can adjust my ISO and my gain in order to match it to the brightness of the screen. And so therefore, I can get the best picture possible. The built-in camera app cannot do that. And I can also adjust the white balance. The screen is too blue. The app is self-explanatory. I don't really have to tell you a lot about how to operate a camera. I think we all know how to do that. The only tricky thing is just getting everything set up physically. That's going to take a little bit of trial and error to get it just right. As you can see here, here in the studio, a lot of daylight coming in. You're probably not going to want to do this in a room with a lot of bright sunlight because it's going to wash out the screen. You're going to get shadows and all sorts of reflections. I'm gonna wait for it to get a little bit darker in here before I actually set this up and show you how to do it. And then we'll be ready to go. Okay, so the sun has set here. So I now have a little bit more control over the lighting. First thing I wanna do, since I'm gonna be recording directly off the screen is I'm gonna clean the screen. I don't want the camera picking up any fingerprints or smudges or any other thing other than a nice clean high resolution picture. You want to make sure that you use a screen that's at least as high resolution as the picture that you're trying to display. So since we're going to be copying standard definition video, this small high definition TV will be fine. This is actually the newest TV that I have. It's relatively new. Okay, now that I've cleaned the screen, let's get started with the setup. For the playback, I'm going to use my trusty TRV 460. You've seen me use this before. This is pretty much my workhorse when it comes to any type of playback. It plays digital 8, it plays high 8, and it also has a lot of connections, the USB, Firewire, and AV. So I'm going to use this little adapter here. It will turn the AV into the female plugs here. These female plugs are perfectly suited to mate up to 
the connectors for the TV. So I've got the yellow, red, and white, and all I need to do is connect it to the yellow, red, and white of my TV. Turn my TV on, it should be ready to go. Now I'm showing this to you from the perspective behind the camera. So I've got the iPhone mounted in the mount. I've got the TV there, now I'm gonna turn the TV on. TV's warming up. You need to set the input. You need to select input, AV. Press play on the camera. Now I'm getting video. Now I'm showing this to you from a behind the scenes view. So what this camera right now is seeing is not that important. What's important is that the camera that is pointed at the screen is getting a good picture. So I'm gonna come in closer on that to show you how that needs to be set up. Okay, pushing my photographic skills to the limit here because I'm taking a picture of a camera taking a picture of the TV. Setting all the shutter speeds, ISO, and gain to all make this look right is turned out to be a little more of a challenge than I expected. So you can see what needs to happen to set this up. So this camera right now is zoomed in on that picture it's getting a very sharp and clear picture, to be honest with you, but it needs to zoom in a little more. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the zoom button, zoom in until that screen is completely full. And you can see right away, you got a little bit of a problem because this is a 4.3 image. And I'm trying to shoot with a 16.9 profile. So why don't I come in here and change that? So I come in here, make that a 4.3. Let's let's go with the highest let's go with the highest resolution we can. So oh, now my zoom is completely messed up. Let me come in and make that fill the screen as much as I can. Okay, I had to tweak a few things, get it back to where I wanted it, get my shutter back to 60, get my screen aspect ratio correct, zoom in as much as I can, minimize the amount of black area, letter boxing or pillar boxing. We can always play with that in the computer, but we want to get as much picture on the screen as possible. What you also want to do is probably turn the lights off in the room so you can see better. But what you want to do is play with the white balance, play with the ISO, and, see, and get that as dialed in as best you can. My camera just was paused for too long. So I'm going to hit play again. A little bit of trial and error. You wanna get your white balance, you know, start with something like that blue sky. You know exactly what a blue sky should look like and green grass. You know, start with something where you know the colors. You know, play with the, the zoom and the focus as much as you can to get that screen as full as you possibly can. When you get it how you want it, this camera is doing the recording. I'm taking a picture of this camera just so you can see what it looks like. So I backed up a little bit so you can get a better idea. Basically, I just have the camera pointed at the screen. I'm zooming in, I'm adjusting it, I'm making it as close to how it needs to be as possible. When I get everything the way I want it, I just hit play. And then I hit record. probably don't want to be talking as well because I don't have a direct audio hookup I'm just using microphone so for demonstration purposes 
it's going to pick up all of this conversation. And that's it. Now it's in the camera. Now it's in the phone. Now it's digital. Now all I have to do is plug in my iPhone to the computer and access the video. We all know how to get videos out of an iPhone, but I'm just going to show you real quick. Just open that up on your computer. It says internal storage. It's only going to show you the camera folder. It won't show you everything. These are all the camera folders that I've created over the history. I don't know what the heck these numbers mean. But the one with the highest number is going to be the most recent one. There's that QuickTime video that I just made. Now I click on that, I can play it, I can do all sorts of things with it, but it's in the computer. So I've answered the question, how do I get this into my computer? I now have the video in the computer. Before you can play it, you really have to download it off the phone. For some reason, iPhones are really picky about that. So you have to copy it over to your computer before you can actually play it. Okay, so what did we learn here? I was able to use the iPhone to copy the video from the TRV 460. If you're the type of person that likes a one button solution, this is probably not the way you want to do it. There's a near infinite number of variables on the camera in terms of shutter speed, ISO, white balance, focus, zoom, positioning the camera. In the end, I found that it worked even better when I bumped the shutter speed up to uh, 1200. The higher the shutter speed, the better. You have to play around with the, the lighting to get everything just as bright as you want it, not too dark. So if you love playing with variables, this is the way for you. Like I said, this is not a one button solution. It's not the easiest way. Sometimes it's the only way. If the difference is being able to capture your precious memories or not getting them at all, then I'll do this in a heartbeat. So if this is the only method available, all you have is a camera and able to point it at the screen. You play around with it long enough, you can get some pretty nice images. Not quite as nice as if you copied it electronically directly from the source, but it'll be good enough. But sometimes that's all you have. And so you have to work with what you have and do the best you can. And so this is method number six, how to get images from the camera into the computer via a camera phone. And as always, Please like or subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.